Hey guys, today we are going to look at some random card prices that have gone up and these card prices are interesting because they they tend not to be the best cards, but they are old. I do remember playing this one. I think this was reprinted in Chronicles or I remember playing a white border and I'm pretty sure it's Chronicles because it had the Arabian Night symbol. So now it is a $13 card from pretty much... Um, a dollar maybe two dollars it's an old card and they re remember when i was saying 93 94 made no it didn't make any sense to me because i don't remember playing any of those cards like i can't remember playing that many reserve list cards but i do remember playing this card and this card being very good as a one drop it's a one free which back in the day i mean savannah line was considered the best one drop at as a two one creature so a one free can take out Savannah Lion and survive. It also has the other ability where it can untap itself. So it's very useful. And so 93, 94, I think it's a real format now because the cards that should be going up, like Hypnotic Spectre, uh, Juxtapose, for instance, I remember playing that, uh, the Legends, and it was reprinted somewhere else, I think in Miraz. But when I was a kid, it was kind of the random effect. We didn't have like the red chaos effects that you guys have now. We had juxtaposed and that was considered one of the better chaotic abilities as you can tell from the text. So now like all of these cards are going up. So the reserve list cards went up first. Then these cards went up and at the end of the day, the, the, this particular batch makes more sense to me than the previous batch. The previous batch was kind of like, I don't remember playing any of those cards. I don't remember playing Norwales. I don't remember playing uh, any of those cards, to be quite honest with you. But I tell you what I do remember playing. I remember playing Juxtapose, and it was really fun, and Brass Man. So all the cards that people, for the most part, uh, have ignored or have been going up in price and that's very 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 critical because it means it could be a real format it's a collector's format right so city of brass we played city of brass back in the day and you can see from the graph it didn't go up until recently because it's not under reserve list it's in multiple my problem with it the format was i felt it was imaginary because i played Magic during that time period, and no one was playing the cards that were spiking. They were just spiking because they were on the reserve list, not because they were actually playable in any type of format. I think the collectors, I mean, you have two issues here. You have the collector issue where these are very, very uncommon, and if you want them, they're not going to get any cheaper because there's not any more going to be reprinted. And you might be like, oh, well, they just reprinted City of Brass, right? Yes, they did, and it was one of the Modern Masters, one of those, uh, it was on the booster box, I believe. But not this City of Brass, not with the Black Border, not with the Arabian Nights. Um, and that's how I feel like they can do the reserve list. The reserve list will always be valuable. The cards on it will always be pricey because they're old. Uh, a Black Border Dual Land will ne never go down in price, even if we reprinted regular Dual Lands into Oblivion, as you can tell from these. All right, so this card I do remember playing when I was younger. Um, the Enchantress deck has always been a deck. It's always been a Tier 4 deck. I'm glad. In my opinion, it is one of the most beautiful artworks. I never understood why it was at the price it was, considering everything else going up. So I'm glad to see, I have to go find these. I have a lot of these. Um, this particular card I have collected and collected and collected. And it's one of those things that I look at and I say, hmm, I definitely need to go back and look at it. Uh, Visions was one of my favorite sets. And I'm very glad that this card is over $3 because I have a ton of them. So sometimes the best speculations are cards you just like. The cards are unique and you just like them. And I've always I've always enjoyed global effects even before ED8s because they always felt good. Because I played this um, format called, what is it, Generals? Or what is it? Is it called, is it called Generals? 
Maybe, yeah, maybe it's called Generals. I forgot what it was called, but there's two Generals. Oh, Emperor. I played Emperor, and this was a very good card in Emperor because it was a global effect. All right, Greed. Greed has been reprinted a few times, I believe. I think I the Greed and Eighth Edition is our seventh. I think his Eighth is quite valuable in foil. So Greed, what do I need to say about Greed? I like it. I like all Legends cards, and people did play it. Uh, it was surprising because life... People did not want to lose life, right? That was wh why Necropotence was not good until it was good. So, okay, actually it was always good, but people didn't play it because they were like, oh man, losing one life, that's so much. <laughs> greed was kind of the same principle where people didn't like, I'm pretty sure I'm, greed is the yeah, pay two life, pay one black, pay two life, draw a card type of deal. I love it. I think it's one of the stronger cards and classic, classic card draw. I don't know, if you ask my friends now who are on Wall Street, who are doctors and stuff, and we played Magic when we were younger, uh, it turns out, so Magic was a lot different back then. I'm going to tell you a story. Magic, if you played Magic back then, you were bullied. I, I mean, pretty much. Uh, Mag I was, I'm 30 years old now, so I graduated high school 2004. Five, I want to say so around middle school which was 2001 2000 yeah 2000 in sync right you didn't really have people play that many video games we didn't have wow we didn't have league of legends and the video games that were just coming out it was considered like very nits and very nerdy and if you played card games magic gathering in particular i mean that's not like the route to be popular and i know a lot of you in comments like oh well i play magic and i was so cool um that is not my experience with it um i after i gave up magic i became cool popular at uh, nyu and i gave up magic at nyu i played magic my freshman year and then the second so i played during dissensions which was the second semester of freshman year but then after that, I did teach. I was four. I was the teaching assistant to fourteen different classes. I was the orientation leader of fourteen different groups. Um, so my Facebook blew up. I got invitations to parties, and I kind of wish I didn't give up magic. Um, I did sell half my collection at the time, and it was a very very nice collection. I don't even want to talk about it. But, you know, you wanted to party. You're in Manhattan for four years. You want to party. Um, it's a fun time. I, I don't regret it. Lotus Veil, by the way, is a very good pickup. I love Lotus Veil. I think it is underpriced. Uh, if there was one card from this list, I would say, hmm, I would buy. If you didn't have, it would be Lotus Veil. It has been ticking up, but not for something of its power. It, it's very strong. And on the reserve list, by the way, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, Magic, back to my story. Magic is, has always been part of my life, but I was popular I was popular in law school too. I was the head of my fraternity as well as head of the IP class, environmental, pretty much any group I wanted to join. I would be president even as a second year, which is uncommon. I was second year president of a lot of stuff and that was fun, but at the end of the day, after I graduated from law school, I played Magic, and I've really enjoyed Magic. Um, it's been something that I've always loved, and I now it's more popular, it's more widespread. Like they sell at Walmart and Barnes and Nobles and stuff like that. I mean, when I played, it wasn't like that. Um, it wasn't. Um, how can I say it? When I was in elementary school, the teachers threw out our magic cards because they thought it was very demonic. And some of the cards were demonic. Earthbind in particular, if you have a female teacher in elementary school, she will throw out your cards because after she sees Earthbind, she's like, what the hell are these little kids doing? And that's the end of magic. And we would sneak and play magic. And uh, I, I miss it. You know, I miss it. But my friends have done very well for themselves. Um, everyone who has was in my play group, my middle school play group with the sleepovers and stuff, they've all done very well. Because magic back then, I mean, if you were attracted to it, you tended to be uh, intelligent, a little bit nerdy. Uh, you tend to be in a robotics club and all of that stuff, right? Anyway, <laughs> I remember the chess club was in middle school was just a magic club, and we named it chess club so we were going to get beat up.
I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous, but that was the case. Anyway, bye guys.